Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book haul. This is for October. I'm pretty sure because it's November, so happy November, everybody. What I'm going to be doing this year is a thrill November. I'm going to be doing uh, thrillers all month long with some other stuff sprinkled in just because I have some projects going on. Right off the bat, I need to apologize to a few people, uh, to Regina Haunt Regina's Haunted Library, to Kobe, to uh, Wayne Fenlon, to my buddy Terry, all of you I'm, I have to apologize, but the card that your unboxings were on got corrupted. I kept them all on the card so that I could add them to my newest walkie-talkie as kind of like segments, interludes into each section. And that card is corrupted. I've lost all that footage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all the books that they sent me, um, but basically in the order that I got them. So not of importance or anything like that. First off, we got the books that Terry sent me, which is American Heroin. This is uh, my last book haul I did. Uh, I got the physical copy of Lola by the same author, Melissa Scrivener Love. Uh, I like that book all right. It does have its flaws. And I, this is the sequel to it. She sent me that um, after seeing the book haul. And then she also sent me The Library of the Unwritten. Join the library. Raise hell. This is about a library in hell, I guess. Um, oh, no. it's uh, Claire is the headlight bearing of the unwritten wing, a neutral space in hell where all the stories unfinished by their authors reside. Very, very cool premise. So that's from Terry. Next up, we have uh, Regina from uh, Regina's Haunted Library. She writes under the name R. St. Clair. She sent me two of her books and an awesome bookmark. See the, see the spoopy, see the spoopy woman? Yeah, very cool. I hate the glare, but sent me a really cool, really good, really cool bookmark. It says the Dark Hollow Chronicles, the Ghosts of Dark Hollow, the Witch of Long Shadows, the Lord of Blackshire, Blackshire? Blackshire, Blackshire. Uh, by R. St. Clair, cover design by Consuelo Para, 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 I'm not sure, model M. Jarnum, stock DeviantArt, well that's, that's DeviantArt, but she sent me uh, Black Magic, this one, and she also sent me Unmasked, The Truth Will Be Revealed, I love that image, it's a very cool image, you're seeing the, the, the red is from my, uh, from the curtain, I have over the window of my office. But yes, this is very cool. Thank you so much, Regina. I appreciate it. Also, thank you, Terry, for the for the last books. Sorry, I didn't say that. Uh, next up, we have this is this is awesome. Uh, Kobe, uh, I I hope I'm getting your name wrong, right. Kobe, Kobe. I'm not sure exactly which one, but uh, they sent me it, the Dutch version. I believe it's a Dutch Dutch version. Um, I found. <laughs> I posted on Twitter uh, uh, that it said it says het. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna murder this. Het is de stank van het beast, de stank van het. I said obviously het is de stank means it is the shit. No, it doesn't mean that, but I got a tickle out of it anyways. But yeah, but on the back, the glowed. I don't, I'm not sure. I guess that's a shining. I guess that's supposed to be. I'm not sure. No, the shining, the the. Be, I'm not not gonna murder it, but there's a uh, other copies, uh, other covers from other ones of his books, like The Shining. That's literally just Jack Torrance from uh, Kubrick's The Shining. That's that's Jack Nicholson on the cover right there. Um, and then it looks like Dolores Claiborne, The Spellbreaker, maybe maybe Cujo. I don't know. It's got a doggo on the cover. Anyways, last. Wayne Fenlon sent me another amazing collectible. This is Haruki Murakami's Norwegian Wood. Okay? But it opens up like this right here. Yeah. It's the book. It's the... I think it's what, what, it's, what it is, is. It's the mimicry of the original Japanese release. Um, let's see here. Uh, when it was published in Japan... Norwegian Wood quickly attained cult status, making its author a national celebrity. Uh, this first edition of the new translation echoes the red and green format of the original that sold more than 4 million copies and captured the imagination of a nation. This is a beautiful collector's edition, Wayne, and thank you so much. Again, you always send the, the craziest gifts, man. 
I never never expect them. I have no idea what's coming. Uh, this is another surprise that he sent me. Thank you so much. And for the other thing that you sent that we shall not speak of. Shh. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay. So on with the rest of the book haul. Those are my gifts. Uh, I'm going to split this up kind of. Well, no, I got, I got some more gifts. Um, let me take that back. So uh, I'm trying to. All of these. Well, I have a load of John Connolly books. So we have The Black Angel, The Unquiet. Uh, these were sent to me by uh, my friend Angela. And then The Lovers. So I got those. But I also, actually, I think I've already unhauled these. Yeah, I already, I unhauled these last time and I talked about them and they had the numbers on them. So I take that back. These are the, these are the new, the new gifts. Uh, from my friend Amanda, who uh, is the one who sent me The Killing Kind and The White Road. She then sent me uh, The Lovers. Then she well, all these came in the same package. Uh, the Burning Soul. I'm trying to keep these in order. And The Reapers. This one actually comes before these other two. But let me stack all this back the way it was. I am so unorganized with this series it's not even it's not even funny we're gonna put these over here for a second uh let me get this one uh, actually i did have the lovers so i have i now have two copies of the lovers and unfortunately i have two copies of the reapers because i went out and i bought uh the reapers itself so because i didn't want to end up getting to that and needing to go out and buy it so i have two of those my two a giveaway or something? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, then Atria Publishing sent me the one before the uh, the newest one, which is A Book of Bones. They sent me The Woman in the Woods. And I grabbed Nocturnes because I'm almost done with The White Road. And there's a novella in here uh, that is uh, number 4.5 in the Charlie Parker series. So that's where I am at. That's where I'm at with my Parker series all that going on right there okay so i bought those new and not well i bought yeah i bought reapers and nocturnes new i also got two books from an author named uh jonas carlson or jonas jona i'm not sure he's a uh, norwegian i believe sweden he's swedish finally i finally get it. <laughs> i finally got it right i always i've, I've called uh herman cox cock cock Koch, i don't know um, Herman, I've, I've called him uh, Swedish and Norwegian. He's actually Dutch. Uh, I've called, uh, let's see here, Jo Nesba. I've called him Swedish. I think he's actually Norwegian, or maybe I've called him Norwegian and he's actually Swedish. This guy, definitely Swedish, has performed on Sweden's premiere stage and is acclaimed feature films and TV, and in acclaimed feature films and TV series. Uh, Terry... My friend Terry sent me a link to a giveaway of his called The Circus, I think it was. Um, a giveaway for his newest book. It's not out yet. And I went and looked it up, and these sound amazing. They sound like a Haruki Mitakami kind of magical realism, and that's what I'm into right now. Uh, if it's weird and set in the real world, I'm all for it. So I got the invoice, and I got the room. The room sounds amazing. The room is about a, a, just a regular guy uh, that works in an office space, and he finds a special room in that office space that nobody else can see. I got these two books were on on sale. Uh, those were those two were used. Um, I think they were about five dollars a piece. But this has been on my wish list forever. Eileen by Otessa Mashfe, maybe Mashfe. Is that one? And then Baby Teeth by Zoji Stage. Zoe Stage? I'm not sure. But uh, this one, Keelan Patrick Burke raved about, but my buddy Don absolutely hated. Um, and I, I trust both of them. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it's short, and it was on sale for like 7 bucks, brand new. Um, both of these were under $7, brand new, and they were on my wish list, so I went ahead and grabbed them. Um, next up, we have, uh, if you're a fan of Good Mythical Morning, I went ahead and got their book, uh, the, Lost Clauses, uh, the Lost Causes of Bleak Creek, just... Because I was, I, I'm curious about it, and it was super cheap. It was only like $14 on Amazon. But, uh, and I'm not going to Amazon anymore. This is the last purchase I got from Amazon. Um, I'll talk about that in a video at some point in time. But I wanted to know, really, if really and truly, they wrote the book. 
Um, how you find these things out, whether or not they have a ghostwriter, is you go to the copyright page, and then you go down to where it says uh, the, the writers of the book, and it'll have names. It'll say, is Library of Congress cataloging in publication date, names, McLaughlin Rhett, that's of course Rhett of Rhett and Link, uh, Link Neal, that's Link, author, and then it says Reuben Lance, author. It's the same thing with like James Patterson and uh, Bill Clinton's book, The President is Missing. Neither one of those guys wrote that book. If you go to that, if you go to that page, you'll see that Dave, David Ellis is the one who wrote that book. He is marked down as the, uh, as the, as the writer. So in this one, the, even though Rhett and Link are down as the writers, they're probably just the story contributors. And then Lance Rubin or Rubin Lance, I'm not checking again, uh, he's the one who actually wrote the book. But yeah, uh, I'm interested to see if this is any good. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's probably YA, so who knows. Um, I'm going to definitely give it a chance, though. Now, the last one that I bought brand new is something I've been looking for forever. I was talking about it uh, on Twitter, and a company called Bucket of Blood, I think it is, uh, they said, hey, we have a copy in, and that is John W. Campbell's Who Goes There, the novella that uh, the original The Thing and John Carpenter's The Thing were based on. Well, the, Howard Hawks, The Thing from Another World, and then John Carpenter's remake, The Thing. Uh, this is the novella. It, it's super short, man. It's got an introduction and everything. From what I understand, it's a very, very, very short story. I'm going to be getting to this soon. Uh, either for, uh, no, not for Thrillvember. I'm going to end up for D. Snowbird. Yes, we are going all in with that stuff. Yes, we're turning into a basic book, <laughs> basic booktube channel. No, but uh, um, I want to have some fun, and it sounds like fun. So we had Spooktober, Thrillvember, D. Snowbird, January, January is what I'm going to do. I might do January. That doesn't sound good, but I got a bunch of YA books I need to get through. Um, things that were sent to me for review for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I'm not a YA reviewer, but they were sent for review, and I got to get to. Them. I have to get to them at some point in time. Um, next up, pretty much all the rest of this stuff is uh, either a quarter, or it was all in uh, the library's uh, a bag of books for a dollar. I can't remember what. This is the last bit of my haul for this past month. I just went in there and I cleared them out. Sorry, Blue, but I cleared them out. Anyways, so first off, we have Masters of Horror, edited by Aiden H. Norton. Norton? Not Norton. Norton. And it's got Bram Stoker, Ray Bradbury, Robert W. Chambers, uh, A. Merritt, and Henry Kuttner. So many different people. I, I got it because of that cover. I mean, I, I love these old short stories, short story collections. And after I read them, I just end up getting rid of them. So if you're interested in it, after I get done with it, I sell it to you. Cheap, too. Make $2? You want it for $2? Take it. Take it for two dollars. I got uh, Lawrence Block's A Walk Among the Two Stones. It's a movie tie-in cover, but I do not own this copy. I don't own this book at all. I own some of the series, uh, the Matthew Scudder series, in audiobook, some in ebook, which I'll never read. Um, I'll probably end up, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that explanation here in a minute also. But uh, yeah, so this one, I don't know what number it is in the series, but I love the Scudder series, and I've never read this one. Uh, Liam, it was made into a movie starring Liam Neeson. I don't know why. I don't see Liam Neeson as Matthew Scudder, and I probably will never see the movie. Speaking of movies, we got Meg, Steve Alton. Of course, this is a book before it was the movie with Jason Statham. But, anyways, uh, I, I finally got a copy of Meg. It was up at the library. I know for a fact that this was a library copy. Not a library copy. It's from the library. It's actually brand new. It's, I mean, it's never been... It's perfect condition. Perfect shiny condition. Alright, next up we have The Prestige, which has the most boring cover I've ever seen. This is another one that's a, a great movie. I enjoyed it a lot, um, so I decided to get the, the novel. Um, I don't know if it's the novelization... Or yeah, it's, it's got to be not. It's got to be the novel the movie's based on, right? It would say a novelization of them. It says a novel by Christopher Priest. I don't know. We'll find out. If you know, leave a comment down there and do the deal. All right. Uh, next up, we have. I finally. These came from Eight Books. I forgot. These actually came from Eight Books. It's Books of Blood Volume Three and Books of Blood Volume Four. 
So I finally got physical copies of those. Once uh, we get to me and Cammy from Cammy's Corner, once we, once we actually get to our uh, Clive Barker read through, I pretty much have all of his stuff. I also got last month. I got from a books. I got a hardcover copy of this one, but I couldn't pass up the paperback. The Wee World. So I finally got a decent reading copy of that one because I don't really like reading hardcovers. I just got it. Uh, for the collection, because if I don't end up liking all these books, I would just sell the collection, and a collection of hardcover Barkers should bring in a, quite a bit of money, if it's a full collection. If it's a full collection. And uh, last of the uh, small trade, not trade, mass market paperbacks, I got One on One by Tabitha King, who is, of course, uh, the famous author. Her husband's an author, too. I can't, can't place his name right now. But anyways, um... Let me stop. Alright, so uh, Tabitha King's one-on-one. -on -one. This is a this is like a 700-page, no, five, 520 some odd page romance or erotica or whatever. It's not my thing, folks. Not my thing. I didn't know she wrote things like that. But uh, if you have read it and it's not that, please let me know. Cody, you out there? You out there? I don't know if you are or not. Anyways. Okay, so let me move some stuff around real quick. Because I got some funny stuff to show you. Um, this isn't the funny stuff. I'll, sh I'll show you the funny stuff in a minute. Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. I hope I got that right. Jonathan Safran Foer. Is that it? I don't know. Okay, and then uh, this one's actually for uh, my wife. Shell loves this show, or loved this show, up until like the sixth season. But it's The Walking Dead, Rise of the Governor, I think. Is that it? Yeah, Rise of the Governor. So there's that one. I got that for her. She also really enjoyed Son of Anarchy's Bravido. Something like that. Anyways, it was a uh, paperback tie-in. Uh, this one is Lev Grossman's The Magicians. All this stuff came from the library, guys. I just I, I snatched everything, so a lot of this stuff will probably end up getting resold. Um, uh, this one, I'm, collect I'm slowly collecting Gore Vidal books because I, I love the man uh, and his... Uh, his intellect while he was alive, and I'm trying to get through his books now. It's going to take a while because I'm not too keen on his writing. I loved his interviews and all of his uh, talking points and uh, the uh, the two documentaries I watched on Netflix. But this is Kalki, or whatever, however you pronounce that, by Gore Vidal. And then this one I bought just to show you guys. Y'all, you see that? Can you see that? Here. Who is that? Y'all, that's Marilyn Monroe. This is not about Marilyn Monroe. This is called Demon by John Varley. Y'all, what is this? It's got a, it's got a, what is it, a centaur? Centaur, whatever, the horse man people? And some, uh, it's got a woman riding a female centaur? And then just Marilyn Monroe with, like, white ferret? Luck dragons all over. What is this book? I'm gonna actually gonna open it up, and uh, we're gonna read this real quick. For three million years, Gaia has turned a vast wheel-like world. Terry Pratchett, mad as hell right now. A god who created all the life forms inside her, from the intelligent centaur-like titanides to the huge living blimps. Miles long to the gruesome zombies who cannot die. This actually sounds really good. Um, unlike the gods of Earth, Gaia has materialized and is unable to manifest herself in whatever form she wishes. She has intelligence and personality, and ultimately she is a capricious god, full of whimsy and danger. I'm going to stop. I'm going to try to read this, y'all. Who, who wants to try and but If y'all can find copies of this, who wants to buddy read Demon? Demon. But this name my cat. Actually, the cat's name's Holiday. They call her Holly, but she demon. It's a demon, y'all. Then we got some CJ Box, because I've heard about Box. I've heard about CJ. I've heard about CJ's Box. No, I haven't heard about CJ. You, you stop it. Um, but yeah, uh, I think David Joyce talked about him. Um, one of these is the first book in a series, and the, that, the first Joe Pickett novel. This one's the first. This one's like number 11, I think, when I looked it up. But yeah, so we got this one. And we got this one. Um, I'm going to get through this one. I don't know if I'll continue on with the series, but there you go. Next up is a classic. I'm actually going to try and finish uh, Don Quixote. 
Uh, I love the idea of this story, um, and I've watched the Thug Notes version. If you don't, if you guys don't follow Thug Notes, you really need to. But uh, I've watched the Thug Notes version. Uh, the Thug Notes is like Spark Notes, but hoodish. It's amazing. Look it up on YouTube. Um, but yeah, uh, and it sounds amazing. And now that I know the themes and everything, maybe I can actually get through. I've never tried it before. Let me say that also. I've never tried it before. So I'm going to try Don, uh, Don Quixote. If anybody else has read it, let me know. But I opened up and I looked. This is a new translation and it reads rather smoothly. It doesn't read like, you know, the other uh, classics. I have a problem with those. Other, they're just so dry. And it, this doesn't read dryly. Uh, next up I have uh, John Krakauer, Krakour, whatever, Into the Wild. It just looked interesting. I don't think I knew that's who it was. I thought it was... Why did I think it was... Kirak. Jack Kirak? How do you pronounce that? I don't know. That's what I thought it was. But anyways, Into the Wild. Looks interesting. A young man from a well-to-do family hitchhiked to Alaska and walked alone into the wilderness north of Mount McKinley. His name was Christopher Johnson, <laughs> Christopher Johnson McCandless, who had given 20... Uh, sorry, he had given 25000 in savings to charity, abandoned his car and most of his possessions, burned all the cash in his wallet, and invented a new life for himself. Four months later, his decomposed body was found by a moose hunter. That escalated quickly as hell, boy. All right, next up we have Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Yeah, um, I want to read this before I watch the Tom Hanks Holly Berry movie can't remember. Uh, next up is another one I want to watch. Um, I think it's on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure. Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. I tried one other Joseph Heller book and wasn't able to finish it, but we're going to try this one. We're going to try it. Next up, uh, we have two that I'm going to end up selling because I've actually had this one before, which is The Nest, and then this one, The House at the Edge of Night. They're just really good, clean copies, and they're going to go to Second and Charles. Because uh, they pay a pretty good uh, penny for those. I don't know why they do, but they do. Uh, next up is a book that I tried. I said I was going to talk about uh, the e-book copies and not being able to read them. I have tried several e-book copies, uh, ARCs from NetGalley, and the more I try to read e-books, the more I hate the format. I don't know what it is. It's just it doesn't do anything for me, and it it has ruined several what I feel are decent books. I just don't want to go back to them because I don't want to have to carry my tablet. I don't want to have to worry about my tablet dying, any of that stuff. But Syndrome E is a book that was sent to me for review in an electronic electronic copy, and I did not finish it because it was an electronic copy. I think this is uh about people who either go deaf or blind. I'm just let, let's just read it real quick. Uh. Lucy Hannibal, single mother and beleaguered detective, has just about enough on her plate when she receives a panic phone call from an ex-lover who has developed a rare disorder after watching an obscure film from the 1950s. With help from the brooding inspector Frank Sharko, who is exploring the movie's connection to five unearthed corpses at a construction site, Lucy begins to strip away the layers of what may be the most disturbing film ever made. With more lives on the line, Sharko and Lucy struggle to solve this terrifying mystery before it's too late. It doesn't say anything about what the syndrome is, but I'm pretty sure... Oh, yeah, what you don't see could kill you. Something like that. It's not like Bird Box, I don't think, but uh, it's more thriller than, than that. But, yeah. So, next up we have... This one had some sus suspect goo on it. It was white and dried up and caked and... Yeah, I had to clean that. It's still not completely clean, so I'm going to keep my fingers away from what I think it is. Jonathan Kellerman's Obsession. I'm just collecting Jonathan Kellerman books because I've enjoyed several of his, so I'm just getting them. So anytime that I have a want or a need for some Kellerman, I have plenty of Kellerman. Next up, Steve Jobs. I love biographies um, about people, pop culture, celebrities, that kind of thing. So I grabbed this one. Uh, this one is written by Walter Isaacson. I, I think he he worked for Time Magazine, and he had a lot of contact with uh, Steve Jobs. And I think Jobs asked him to write this book. Uh, I read just a little bit of the opening, and that's what I got for it. Next up is an absolute thick boy from Dennis Lehane called The Given Day. I'm going to give Lehane one more shot, and this is going to be the book. I haven't liked anything of his. Yeah, I know, Rage at Me Down in the Doobly-Doo. I tried the... the the detective series or whatever he has, the 
I can't remember. Gone, Baby Gone. I tried that series. I tried Mystic River. I love the movie. Couldn't get into the book. I'm going to try, and I tried Shutter Island. Love the movie. Couldn't get into the book. I'm going to try this one. It's an absolute monster. An absolute unit at 700 some odd pages. Next up, actually this is last. This is the very last one from this book haul. We have The Thirst by Yo Nesba. This thing was on uh, clearance at, where was it, Books A Million for $6, so I went ahead and grabbed it. So if you have a Books A Million and you're interested in the Yo Nesba, he usually ends up over there. The, the quality of his hardcovers has dropped considerably. He had a very cool series, I think the uh, last one, Phantom, or Phantoms? I can't, no, it's just Phantom. Uh, the way they were doing those is like a matte cover with like a ripped out section that was glossy. They stopped doing that. And now they're just doing these boring covers. And I'm pretty sure that's him on the cover right here. Because, I mean, that's him. I mean, it's either him or it's Keelan Patrick Burke. <laughs> Anyways, but that's my book haul. Uh, this is the part in the show where I ask you guys to do your own book hauls down there in the doobly-doo. If you're a booktuber, YouTuber, whatever, and you have a video with a book haul in it, please link it down below. If it goes to spam, I will eventually get to it. I check my spam once a week because sometimes there's some very innocent stuff over there that for some, I have no idea why YouTube throws it over there, but links usually end up over there. Um, book Hauls are some of my favorite content, probably my favorite content on the platform because I get to know people. Uh, I, it's a really easy way for me to get to know people um, because I, I like to not study but research people's buying habits. You can really tell someone's, uh, someone's personality from what they buy or how much they buy, that kind of thing. But yeah, leave all those links, leave your book hauls, all that stuff there, down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book haul video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!